Ethernet cables are everywhere and I'm sure you're watching this video through an Ethernet cable. So what if you need an Ethernet cable as there are many types of Ethernet cable and every type has different properties and application. Choosing the best Ethernet cable would be easy if you have some information about every type of these cables. This is such a mechanic and today I'm going to tell you about every type of these Ethernet cable so you can choose best for yourself. So first of all CAT5 or CAT6 don't have any connection with any CAT in any way. But this CAT is short for category and this means this is category 5 and category 6 Ethernet cables. You will also find CAT5E, CAT6A and CAT7 Ethernet cables in market. All these categories are 4 pair cables and you will find a green, orange, blue and brown pair within these cables. The terms CAT5 CAT5E, CAT6, CAT6A, CAT7 basically indicate the composition and design of the cable and of course performance of any cable depends upon its design and physical properties. Despite all the differences in these cables, good thing is that RJ45 connectors can be fitted on all these types of cables. And I'm sure you know that RJ45 stands for registered jack 45. So if you don't have any special requirement you can put any of these cables into your small network and you'll be perfectly fine with that. I mean if you have to transfer data within 100 MB speed limit within a small network at short ranges, any of these cables can do the job. But if you have to design a large network with speed requirement of above 100 Mbps, you'll have to be very careful as your cable must meet data requirements and operating conditions. You don't have to worry much about this as specifications are printed on every cable. This information includes cables category, structural composition, gauge of conductors, operating temperature and maximum voltages that can be applied to that cable. The simplest category of these cables is CAT5. The CAT5 is composed of four conductor pairs with simple insulation which are enclosed in a single PVC jacket. As pairs of conductor in CAT5 cables are not shielded, these conductors can get mutual interference or crosstalk within the cable so response of these cables on higher frequencies are very poor. This effect limits their bandwidth maximum up to 100 MHz. I mean they can't pass frequencies above 100 MHz due to their internal reactance. So due to this drawback, CAT5 can offer maximum up to 100 megabit per second at maximum range of 100 meters. Basic difference between CAT5 and CAT5E is that CAT5E has an extra shielding above its conductors. This shielding is either a conductive mesh or foil and purpose of the shielding is to protect the conductors from external interference or electrical noise. Protection from external interference enhances the data handling stability and thus CAT5E can do better in places with higher electrical noise. Since the beginning of Ethernet age and I think it was around 1988, CAT5 had been connecting the world for at least up to 2002. But after that, when 100 megabits per second got insufficient, a separate record or also called star filler was added into the conductors of CAT5E and it was called category 6 Ethernet cable. The objective behind adding this separator core was to increase the gap between the pairs of conductors and reduce mutual inductance between the conductors. This resulted in lesser crosstalk between the pairs and better response towards higher frequencies. So CAT6 could pass bandwidths up to 250 MHz. In other words, a CAT6 can transfer data with speed of up to 250 megabits per second. Almost all the CAT5, CAT6 cables are printed with the words UTP, STP or FTP. UTP stands for Unshielded Twisted Pair, STP stands for Shielded Twisted Pair and FTP stands for Foiled Twisted Pair. UTP or Unshielded Twisted Pair has no metallic shielding around its conductors. So it would be better that you keep this kind of cable away from electrical noise or high power electrical wiring or a UTP would get alien crosstalk. Alien crosstalk means inductance due to current in nearby cables and this will generate errors in UTP resulting in far less data transfer capacity than your expectations. You can use shielded twisted pair or an STP in situations where you expect electrical noise 
as conductors of STP are wrapped within a metallic lattice or foil. This wrapping can protect conductors from alien crosstalk, but only if this shielding is grounded properly. Some STPs use metallic foil instead of mesh. This foil also absorbs the external interference and shields the conductors against alien crosstalk. Some FTPs consist of polythene foil wrapping. This polythene foil doesn't act as a shielding against interference, but it is meant to lower moisture and damping effects. The upgrade in both SFP and FTP is SFTP that means shielded foil twisted pair. As obvious from the name, an SFTP contains both shielding and foil to shield the conductors against interference and moisture at the same time. The SFTP can prove best when you have to route your cable through messy and damp conditions. Some Ethernet cables include a thread. This thread is called rip cord, and it can be used when you have to strip the sheath or cover of a cable. On top of high buildings or towers, you must use cables with ESD drain wire. The ESD drain wire grounds any electrostatic buildup, but only if properly connected to a ground point. Now back to cable categories. After CAT6, next generation is CAT6A, where A stands for augmented. We can already guess that it must be better and would sport higher speed than a typical CAT6 cable. So let me tell you that a CAT6A sports up to 500 MHz bandwidth, which means this cable can transfer 500 megabits per second across a length of 100 meters. The standard testing length of any cable is 100 meters or 325 feet. All the cables are tested at this standard length, shorter the cable and it will start performing better. And it is possible that on shorter lengths, like we say a couple of meters, a simple CAT5 may perform equally as an upgraded Ethernet cable. Basic reason behind doubling the data transfer speed of CAT6A than a typical CAT6 is that pairs of CAT6A are individually shielded. This individual shielding not only protects the pairs from external interference but also reduces mutual crosstalk. Thanks to this extra foiling and shielding, a CAT6A performs more efficiently on higher speeds than a typical CAT6. But on the other hand, this extra foiling and shielding adds to the weight and diameter of cable which reduces the flexibility of CAT6A. But this issue doesn't seem much when you can transfer data at a whooping maximum speed of 10 gigabits per second, of course at short lengths. And finally we take a look at CAT7 Ethernet cable. The CAT7 is a further upgrade to a CAT6A. The addition is an overall shielding around all the pairs which are individually foiled like a CAT6A2. Due to extra outer shielding, CAT7A can support up to 650 MHz of bandwidth thus capable of transfer rates of more than 10 gigabits per second at shorter lengths and 1 gigabits per second at standard testing length. Typical RJ45 connectors are also applicable on CAT7 Ethernet cable, but for ideal results, GG45, which is short for GigaGate45 or Terra connectors are used. So this was all about categories of Ethernet cables, but there is something more that you should know before we can end our video, and that is gauge or thickness of the conductors inside the cable. Gauge of the conductors is perhaps most important thing printed on any Ethernet cable. You may find something like 23AWG or 24AWG on the cable. The AWG here stands for American Wire Gauge which is a standard for wire thickness. As the AWG is a fractional figure, so lower the number, thicker is the wire and higher number means thinner wires. So here in this example, a 23AWG is thicker or better than a 24AWG. As conductance of any conductor is directly proportional to its cross-sectional area, that means thicker the conductor, greater the conductance and lesser the resistance. A resistance of a conductor causes voltage drop. Low resistance means electrons can pass easily, so not too much voltages are dropped and vice versa. High resistance means more voltage drop in the conductor. Second most important aspect that dominates the efficiency of any conductor is its length. As the resistance of any conductor is directly proportional to its length. That means longer the conductor, higher the resistance and shorter the conductor, lesser will be its resistance. And as I said earlier, resistance causes drop in voltages. So thinner and longer conductors shall drop more voltages. This voltage drop factor doesn't cause much on higher voltages, but must be considered at low voltages like in Ethernet cables, where source voltage levels are hardly around couple of volts. Too much voltage drop may reduce the signal voltages to an unreadable level for the switch or router at the other end and will result in broken connection. 
Bottom line is that if you want to get a reliable connectivity for 100 meters or above, you need to use a thicker and suitable cable. A slight miscalculation and all your effort will go in vain. Another important factor while choosing Ethernet cable is its weather resistance. Especially for outdoor installations, your cable must be able to stand temperature variations and other climate effects. Weather resistance of any cable depends upon thickness of its outer PVC jacket called sheath and grade of material this sheath consists of. It is better to use double PVC cable for outdoor installation as if single PVC gets punctured, a single raindrop or a small amount of moisture can create problems for you. And last but not least, copper is most conductive metal after gold and silver. And that's why it is used in electrical appliances and wirings, as we can't afford to use gold or silver due to their preciousness. Most of the cheaper cables available in market are not copper. The reason they are cheaper is that they use metals cheaper than copper. And of course these cables are not as conductive as copper. So for good results, always use Ethernet cables that use pure copper. If you have got any question, you may ask through a comment. And if you feel this information was helpful, please don't shy to give a like and share with those who need this information. Subscribe the channel to get more like this in future. Till next video, take care.